What's going on guys? It is TJ back again with Gold Label Sports and today I wanted to go over basically the basics of sports card investing, sports card investing 101, um, what separates the investor from the collector and what you need to do if you want to make money in this hobby or if you want to just go off strictly collecting. So first things first, to separate the two, a collector is somebody that, you know, they want to buy what they want to buy, something that they love, whether it's a certain team, a certain player, um, a certain set, whatever it may be, and they don't really want to sell them, they don't really want to um, flip them, they don't really want to make money off them, they just collect them because they want to collect them. Um, somebody who is a sports card investor is using logic um, behind every purchase and behind every single dollar that they spend. So let's say you know you want to invest in LeBron James, right? You're not just gonna go buy, you know, try and buy whatever, 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 whatever. Um, you're gonna have strategy behind your purchases because if you guys, if anyone in this hobby knows, LeBron James is a very lucrative investment that either goes up really, 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 really quick, or doesn't, you know, or goes down a little bit, but then it usually jumps right back up. So you're gonna be making money um, pretty quickly if you invest in LeBron, LeBron cards. Um, then there's the collector, like I said, who let's say they love Patrick Mahomes, right? They just wanna buy Patrick Mahomes cards, don't care what set, they're not gonna flip them. They're not going to try and sell them at all. Um, they just love Patrick Mahomes. They're gonna buy whatever they wanna buy at whatever price, <laughs> they don't really care. Um, but then if you go to the investor side, like I said, if I'm you know, going for Patrick Mahomes, every dollar I'm gonna spend, like I wanna get the autos, I wanna get rookie cards, I wanna get Prism, Select, those high-end cards um, that I can flip over a six to, let's say, 10-month period, or maybe even longer. So first things first, guys, you need to be able to separate your emotion from your logic, right? So if you guys know, sets come out, right? Like mosaic, like the boxes, you know, pr new prism, new select, new hoops, everyone buys them, right? Emotional buying, emotional buying. You wanna get as many as you can. And you know, that's good if you're looking to flip that, but honestly, a lot of those don't hold value, you know, as longer as let's say a rookie card or an auto or a patch, right? Um, stuff like that, that's gonna hold much more value over time, believe it or not. The prices may go up, but they won't go up as much over a year's period as, let's say, a graded, you know, Luca rookie card um, that's signed, right? Um, has much more value than, you know, a box, right? So being able to separate my emotions from my actual logic is huge when um, just starting out, guys. If you can, you know, put your emotions at the door and really think through each purchase, you're going to make a lot of money quicker and you're going to make your dollar stretch longer. All right. That's been the main theme of my channel is helping you guys stretch your dollar from, let's say, bringing my dollar, able to get, you know, three cards out of that dollar. You know, if you guys understand that logic, instead of just buying, you know, one card that, you know, may or may not, you know, bring me back a profit. So um, I'm trying to teach you guys how to make money selling, buying and selling sports cards. And this is a huge, 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 huge portion of it um, is being able to, you know, leave my emotion at the door, logic behind every purchase, understand that, you know, if my you know emotions, especially with all this new shiny product coming out, you need to be able to curb that at the door and understand like, okay, if I get, if I find a bunch of this retail, I, I should probably sell it and then invest that back into a bigger card. Um, that's a, a lot what I do, um, a lot of retail, when I get it, I do not hold it very long um, because a lot of times it's hyped up, hyped up, hyped up, and then the, the price drops rapidly, just like NBA Hoops. NBA Hoops LaMelo Ball rookie cards, for example, um, they were $220 when they first came out, but then when a couple more sets came out with more rookie cards of his, they went down considerably, 50, now they're down to like 50 bucks, 70 bucks. That's a huge drop, guys, huge drop. Um, if you were lucky enough to sell those cards off, that's great. But if you weren't, then you know, you're know you not gonna make much back on your initial investment. So that's, a, that's an example of emotional buy where you wanna be like everybody else and then it come, kinda comes back to bite you because if I buy 40 NBA Hoops boxes and I open all of them and I don't get any Lamellos, which is a, a very big possibility, um, I lose out on all that money. So that's where the risk comes in and that's where the emotional buying comes in. You need to be able to curb that at the door. The next thing, guys, is I need to sit there and understand what cards are going to be worth a lot in a few in a few months and what cards are not going to be a lot in a few months and sell those cards off sorry especially if you guys are looking to get these bigger cards 
you gotta be able to take one, two, three cards, sell them, invest into a bigger card. Sell them, invest into a bigger card. Not all the time is your quantity, right? You don't want, even though if you may have a lot of cards, your set in your collection might not be worth a lot, all right? So when differentiating the two, you need to be able to understand, okay, if I have three cards that are worth $100, right? I can flip them, sell them, and then take that money and buy maybe a Zion or a Luca or a LeBron or a Kobe or, or something, right? Just for an example. Because um, a lot of these cards are going up so much in value over time that it's a lot of them are becoming unattainable. And you need, this is exactly when you need to be able to have a strategy behind your buying. Me right now, buying LeBron, Zion, Ja, Shaq rookies, I'm buying Charizard Pokemon cards, um, and who else am I buying? And Luca, right? That's really all I'm looking for right now. And, um, you know, vintage wise, I have MJ too. MJ is always someone that I'm going to have in my collection because his cards are worth the most, um, you know, in certain sets, in my opinion, it has the most overall um, estimated return on value. I have some of the rarest Skybox, you know, inserts. I have um, his anniversaries. I have his, um, what's it called? His Upper Deck Legacy PSA 9 uh, Fleer rookie card, um, not replica, but just to commemorate that rookie card. And, you know, I'm adding more and more and more as these, uh, you know, weeks and months go on. And, you know, right now I've, you know, over this last month of starting again, I've put my emotions at the door. When I first started, I was a, an emotional buyer. I was so excited, right? And then, you know, I had, you know, a, a lot of return on investment, but I still had to hold a lot, right? That didn't sell. And then I had to wait a whole year to sell them. You know, that's for ungraded cars that are just sitting around. That's, that's not good in my opinion. And, um, you know, this time around, every dollar, I'm strategically buying things. I'm not just sitting there going, okay, oh, I want this Giannis. I want this Luca. I want, you know, that car. I want this car. But now every single thing has a long-term growth purpose. So um, that's probably the biggest thing you want to avoid is the emotional buying and being able to buy with logic and strategy, right? And that's, that's basically the 101, guys. Um, if you can sit there and say, hey, I can, you know, wait a little bit on this and I can take, you know, my money and put it somewhere that's going to be profitable for me in the long term. That's what a sports card investor is. That's the business side of sports. Um, being able to have the discipline to buy what you need, not what you want. Right. Buying what I want. Oh, my gosh. Everyone's buying the NBA hoops. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to buy them. Yeah, I did a couple of videos on those here, um, but a lot of those I sold off. I gave it away. Cause I, you know, I knew that those are lower tier products, but the hype is real and you know, people bought them for me for top dollar. So that's what I did, right? Then these cards that I have, you know, in my, in, in my vault of cards, um, I'm waiting for the perfect time to sell them when the buyer's market is at, you know, the peak, it's a seller's market. I've said this before, everyone's selling their cards, dumb, dumb, dumb decision, right? Cause people, you know, want the next best thing. People need to be able to have the discipline behind the hobby and being able to sit there and say, Hey, I can wait, I can wait. It's okay. It'll come up. The right opportunity will come up. And, um, you know, that has saved me this go around. I've made 10, honestly, five times, 10 times more money already than I did last summer. Okay. And I'm already positioning myself to send in a lot of cards to get graded. That's going to have a huge return on investment just because I'm disciplined with every dollar that I make. I refund it back in, save some, and everything has a strategy behind it. So, um, that's basically it guys. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over that one topic today and just being able to understand the basics of sports cards, especially investing. It starts with being able to be logical in your buying, not emotional. All right. So this is TJ with uh, gold label sports guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and let me know what you guys think in the comments. Subscribe if you're new. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.